Hi everyone. I uh, thought I would uh, create a video about um, how I write a libretto. So I, I really am more of an opera composer and um, though I've written all of the librettos to my operas, uh, I really again consider myself as an opera composer and so my approach is um, more organized than it is, and structured than it is organic. Um, so it's a, I go through quite a process because, you know, my thoughts are that um, having a really strong libretto is key to having a great opera. Um, there are many wonderful arias in some of the operas that have written, been written over the centuries, but many of these operas have been forgotten um, because the libretto um, just did not work. So I thought I would share with you my process in terms of how I um, wrote um, Bless Me Ultima. Now, I do want to mention that I was very fortunate to work with Mr. Anaya. Um, he served as a consultant um, with me on the libretto. Um, and uh, one of my, it was one of, one of, my, one of my most, um, most rewarding experiences that I've ever had in my life, um, to work with a great man like Mr. Anaya. So uh, let me begin. So as, you, as many, most of you may know, uh, Bless Me Ultima is a, is a novel. And I, um, and I created an opera based on that novel. So one of the things I did first was, I'm going to open up this document and share with you. One of the things I did first was I just wrote lots of notes um, as I, you know, read the opera and you could see, you know, I haven't looked at this for, for about four years, so we're kind of looking, you know, looking at this together for the first time in a long time. Um, but you could see that I've made lots of notes about, you know, some of the characters. Um, I also has a couple of references here um, uh, in terms of the chapters. So you can see I just made lots of notes and I referenced the, um, the chapter. And I was trying to, as I'm remembering this, I was trying to remember what the actions were or the important um, narrative points were in the novel. And, you know, if you've read Bless Me Ultima, it's a great novel, it's very extensive. One of the challenges, though, um, with the novel, I, and probably a number of novels, is that it goes from there would be it would go from scene to scene, setting to setting, very quickly, and that does not work in an opera. You know, if you look at some of the the, the great operas, most of the time there are very few um, uh, scene changes. A lot of the action happens, you know, within two or three scenes um, within each act. So obviously. That was very problematic and one of the challenges. Um, so I'm going to close this document. Um, and after doing that, um, then I went for me to the next step. And here you could see um, this column here on the left um, re really references um, what I thought were the important moments in the novel in telling that story. And so this is... Um, on the left is really just lots of notes, um, a little bit more deliberate in terms of what was important. Um, but I, you know, I was not thinking yet um, uh, in terms of what uh, someone would see on stage. But then if you look at the left, at the column on the right, then I started to think about what happens, what, what could be some of the possible scenes. Um, the town and modest home, late afternoon. Uh, oh, then also, um, I, you know, I made some additions. There's, I, I wrote a pro, the prologue, created a prologue. And actually, this dream, if you know the novel, um, uh, this didn't really happen here. It was more of a story uh, or narrative point that happened in the novel. Um, I don't know if I explained that right. And then here on the far right, I was thinking in terms of how long um, each of these um, sort of moments might be. So I was thinking first... What is the action? What could be a possible aria? How long would it be? And then I started adding up, you know, how many minutes? This would be a total of 25 minutes. Um, and so I went through this process, you know, on and on. Then I add 25 plus 5 and so on and so on. Yeah. Well, this was a lot of work, as I remember now. <laughs> yeah, you could see. And then I hear, and I'm see, I started thinking now, you know, what have, what would be, where would Act 2 be? Um, now, the opera, when I originally thought of it, it was going to be um, uh, 
4x. And 4x is very long. It's a lot of music, a lot of time. And one of the directions I got from uh, uh, Tony Zaccanella, who's the, who's the executive director at Opera Southwest, was he said, Hector, you know, make it under two hours. Well, obviously, this was going to be longer than two hours, but um, I wanted to really capture as much as I could in the novel, and that was, you know, my sort of first concern. Um, so I'm going to close this document. Okay. Then from that, um, I narrowed, narrowed it down to a synopsis. Now, I should mention that while I was doing this, I was also thinking about the music, and I was thinking about um, thematically, or what we call light motifs uh, for both the characters as well as um, elements like, you know, the mountains and the river and so on and so on. And um, I might show that in another video in terms of what my process was for the composition. But I left things open enough where I could easily change. But I think what's really important for anybody who's writing a libretto um, is to write um, what I what you saw earlier, which is sort of thinking about a scene by scene. Um, thinking also about where the aries would go, and you would you know do that in, you know in collaboration with your composer. Um, but before really writing any music or writing a, the libretto, I think it's really key to write your synopsis. And usually my uh, synopses are usually only two pages long, at most three. Um, the tighter it is, the clearer the story will be. Um, but you can see again here, I have uh, four acts. Yeah, that's that's what I was still sort of going with. And all of this was, again, in consultation with Mr. Anaya. You know, I would go visit him. We'd talk over the phone. Um, and I was asking him for some of the most important elements in the opera. So, uh, yeah, so this is the libretto. Yeah. Yeah, there were some wonderful scenes that I had to delete um, that I would have loved to have written music for. Um, there was a scene here, the river and the church. Uh, you know, it's the day before Tony's Holy Communion. And, um, uh, and and here I'm mentioning, I see I see that some of the other characters here. The other thing that um, one needs to do when writing, when going from novel to libretto, is uh, eliminating characters. You cannot have too many characters. Uh, the other thing is to really think about who do you who is this going to be performed for? How big of a piece is it going to be? Uh, because you know, uh, larger the cast, larger the orchestra. The more challenging it is to get your work performed, and I'm sort of putting on my producer hat, um, but that's you know that's important. Unfortunately, that's an important consideration, I think. Um, so, all right, so I'm going to close this. So that's I've sort of semi-numbered this, so you could see. Now, uh, I'm going to show you another document I created. Uh, this is all sort of in you know sequence here in order, um, and this is a maybe also thinking in terms of. of of, you know, from the perspective of a composer. Um, as you can see here, I've outlined what the scenes would be, right? And what the music might be. And I think also when you think of it, think of the music, or I guess the libretto too, as a graph, you know, going, you know, from left to, to right, uh, you have to think about um, when the, where is there's an ensemble, where there's a solo, where there's a duet, in terms of the arc of the music and the story, um, you know, you you don't want to have three uh, three solos followed by one big ensemble piece. Um, so that's something to consider. Even when you're and you know, if you're a librettist, it's something for you to think about too, um, and to you know and discuss that with your um, com with your composer. So again, here. This is all when, when I was still thinking it was going to be 4X. Um, I think it was here. Yeah, I think it was here. And after several discussions with Mr. Anaya, and then the realization that it could not be 4X, that I really had to cut it down. And so I had quite a long um, meeting with Mr. Anaya. And I had to sit down and, and just explain to him that it was going to be too long. And then I asked him, what are some of the, the most important themes in the novel? And then that would dictate where I would cut, what scenes I would eliminate. Um, so I'm going to close this and share. I just have two more to share with you. I think, yeah, that's right. 
And so this is the, uh, the final um, synopsis to the opera. So you, you know, it's now been cut down to, th to um, let me make sure, yeah, three acts. Uh, and you could see that after my discussion with Mr. Anaya, I thought about, uh, we talked about it, you know, what are the most important themes? You know, if I had to, you know, cut it down again and eliminate stuff, what are those themes that he said, destiny, good and evil, Catholicism versus the power of the natural world. Um, and you could see that I have color-coded it. Um, so where you see good and evil, it's this yellow, and the destiny, it's the blue. Um, and the black is just, you know, uh, thinking more so about the recitative, which in opera, um, sort of, a, well, I won't go into that, it would be kind of long to explain recitative and what an aria is and all that. Um, but these, I just wanted to share this with you. Um, and it also gives me, you know, doing it this way, and I haven't done this with all of my operas, but I, but this one was, you know, Blessing Mute, was, I wanted to be really true to his opera, to his work and tell it in a really good way. That was my goal, of course. But then he came in, yeah. Um, that um, I wanted to do this. And then it also sort of helped me um, Again, think of sort of it as a graph in terms of the arc of the story where the important narrative moments were. Uh, so, yeah. And, and, yeah. And then finally, it became, I wrote, finished the libretto. And there were the characters. Now, this is sort of very old school in terms of how I write the libretto. Um, and I, I, you know, I worked with Conrad, uh, I went to the Conservatory of Music for my master's, and I worked with Conrad Sousa, who wrote Dangerous Liaisons, and a number of other work, who's a really great man and great composer, who actually told me my first year um, to study Shakespeare <laughs> when I was developing another opera called um, Rio de Mujeres, which is based on the life of my grandmother. And this really helps, um, I think the structure for me helps me a great deal because I um, the, 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 the length of the line here, the way I, I, you know, you could have this all in one line, but this also has some sort of musical indications in terms of how one might sing this, um, how might, might one might phrase this, thinking of the musical phrases, where, there's, where the lines get short and get longer. Um, I mean, that's sort of a more um, in-depth uh, video, which I might do at some point. But this is, a, this is the libretto. This is the libretto. Um, and uh, the reason I, I've done this here, this is where um, the arias are. And so it's a visual in terms of where the arias are. Yeah, so you can see again, here's this, uh, this ensemble piece, right? This is actually the scene when um, they're at the bridge and they're looking for Lupito, who they're about to, who um, they're gonna kill. Um, so that's it. Um, I hope that you think this was interesting. Um, feel free to email me. I mean, even feel free to uh, send me a comment. And uh, if you're interested, uh, subscribe. I'm sort of posting. Th I'm posting things about my work here as a composer, a librettist, but also um, some a new project called Mi Camino, which is exploring the telling the story, telling stories in the virtual world. So, all right. Well, thank you so much.